God, do I love it when you stop by on the weekends. I know you've got better options to choose from, so I really appreciate your time. I'll try not to waste it. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is the weekend of February 18th. Now, we're going to do something different in this show. I'm going to give myself a report card, so to speak. You know, originally this show was formatted to look at on top and hot runners. We were looking at stocks that were tearing up the charts, taking huge gains, having everybody's eyeballs on them that day. Well, that was very entertaining, but it wasn't leaving us a lot of gains for the next day or the next week. So I changed things up around here. Now my primary focus when doing my due diligence is on the charts. And I am blind searching. I don't know what ticker or company it is I'm looking at. I'm just going through the charts one after another off of my scan. And I'm looking for a chart that has heat, that looks like it's ready to break out, has a lot of volume coming in, has had a serious trend change. Then I go looking for lingering news. I'm looking for a news press or a filing that came out a month ago, two months ago, and they are talking about an event that's going to happen in the near future from now so I can get a position now while nobody's paying attention. Well, over the last 30 days, we've covered 45 stocks. How are we doing? Are any of them making money? What sort of gains are they taking? How quickly are they turning over? So I've gathered all that information so we can take a look at that. Also, I'm going to share with you the top five stocks I've got my eye on from the stocks that we're watching. And I want to give you some examples of what warm charts look like. You ready? Let's dive into this. Numbers don't lie. So we're going to look at numbers. We're going to see if changing the due diligence format from looking at hot news to looking at hot charts makes a difference. Now, over the last 30 days, we have covered quite a few stocks, and I've made a few videos. Actually, I've made a video about every single one of them. We have looked at 45 different companies in the last 30 days, and out of those 45, 19 are making us money, over 10% gains. Now, of course, we're only looking at the stock from the time we looked at it. So some of these stocks may have had 30 days on the market already. Some may have only had three days because I just showed it to you a couple of days ago. So we're getting a mixed bag of dogs and cats here, but it will give you an idea of what is going on. So this is the list of all the 45 stocks we have covered in the last 30 days. And there's all sorts in there. You got major exchange penny stocks, OTC penny stocks. You have warrants attached to SPACs. You have warrants attached to companies. I didn't hand pick these. Whatever the chart was, that's what it was. And then we just went looking for lingering news. Well, out of the stocks in the last 30 days, we had 19 of them that are giving us over 10% gains in their own time element. So across the top, I've got the ticker, the date we reviewed it. So if you want to go see the video, see what the company's about, see why we're looking at it, right there is the day it came out. The start price, the day we looked at it, where it got to, its high price from the day we looked at it, how long it took to get there, what the gains were, and what the price is right now. And if it's in red, it's below where it was when we looked at it. If it's green, it's above where it was when we looked at it. So out of these 19 stocks that are giving us gains, would you believe that 16 of them gave them to us in less than a week? So we were there on time. I like to see that. We got three of them here at 10 days, 14 days, and 20 days, which gave us gains. And swing trades, I figure up to 30 days. I mean, you hope for less, but you give it 30 days normally. So we've got 19 stocks within a month that have given us anywhere from 10% to 1,455% gains. But there's a little information to go with that. Now, we don't have time to look at all of these, but I do want to show you a one-day jump. This is WGS. So when you look at these charts, whenever you see that blue line, that is my timeline. That reminds me of when we were here. We were down here at 41 cents. We looked at it. She was coming off of a bounce off of her 200. She had come up over it, had bounced once, and looked like she could do another bounce. We had our crossover, our 50-day had just crossed over our 200, as you can see right here. So she looked like she had potential of a bounce. Whoa, we got a nice bounce, and it came very, very quickly. One day, it hit 70 cents, from 41 cents to 70 cents. Now, it is aftermarket. 
That can be tricky. If you're not following the markets after four o'clock, you could miss something like this. A good trick, you never know when there's gonna be a huge bang like that. You just don't know. So if you're at 41 cents and you say to yourself, you know, I'd probably sell if this hit 60 cents. Well, put it in order for half half of what you have for 60 cents. And you're thinking to yourself, it's probably not gonna go there, it's too high. But throw it in there. You may wake up one morning or in the middle of the day, hear a ding, and you'll go, what was that? Boom, you just made all this profit because a freak jump happened like this, which was very short, but your order was first in the queue when it got there. Ding, you're the guy who got everything up here at the top. Everyone else missed it and said, oh, I wish I would have caught it. Another one we can take a look at is CBDW. January 18th, we looked at it. Look at this, folks. She jumped from 90 cents the day we looked at it to $14 in two days. And you're saying, why didn't you toot the horn on that one, John? <laughs> I didn't hear anything about this. Well, actually, I didn't need to because the fact of the matter is it's not tradable. I mean, it is, but not for everyday investors. CBDW was spun out by Singular, Single Point, which is S-I-N-G. They did this back in 2021, I think it was, and all the shareholders of Sing got free shares of CBDW. Well, it was maybe a month ago, she came onto the market as a pink. She came on at a penny, and I think in one, two days, three days at the most, she went up to $5. I mean, it was an incredible run, huge gains, and everybody who owned shares who had got them from the spin out was trying to sell and nobody would let them sell. So we did some research and found out the shares are still restricted. They were given as restricted shares. They are still restricted shares, but they put CBDW up on the market. Somebody's getting to trade it, as you can see, and it's really irking the heck out of these investors who are holding shares and are disallowed to trade them. Now, the funny thing is, is I am quite aware of this company, 1606 Corporation. This is a hemp corporation. They make beverages. They have smokables. I've been reading about this company for a couple years. They're making money. They're making revenues. They have business. They're doing something. It's not a shell company. And it's on the public market, but the public is not allowed to trade it. So this is why I did not share any big information with you because it's just rubbing salt in your eyes if you own this stock. And I don't want to get you excited if you don't. Uh, it's just not for us. They're still restricted right now. Another one of the stocks we can take a look at was DCFC right here. February 14th, we took a look at it. She was $1.47 then. She hit $2.11 in three days. That gave us 43% gains, and she is still up at $2.07. So she had come across her 200 and her 50 right here, was sitting upon everything. And right here is when we looked at it. There's our blue line. She graduated off of the major SMA. She jumped off of the 50 and the 200 and started working away between the 20 and the 9. That's when I thought this is when we need to look at it. She's gotten off of the big ones. Everything looks like it's coming up. And from there she did. We had one, two, three days of climbing. She got to 212. She is still climbing after market hours, pushing up. And this is picture perfect, folks. You've got a nice wide spread between your 200 and your 50. Then you have a medium spread. Then you have one a little smaller, and that's what you want. You don't want any one of these to get too far spread from the other because it'll all pull back. Everything is riding nice. I like DCFC. This is one of my favorites. And the last stock we can take a look at was our big gainer that we could get a hold of, CEOS. We looked at it January 1st. She was at 28 cents. She went up to 97 cents in 10 days. You had to have some patience here, but that would have got you 246% gains. She was in a channel here. I made it red. There's the middle of the channel, the bottom and the top. She was stuck in the middle here, got over the 50% mark and over the 50. And look, she jumped. She got a lot of excitement, a lot of volume. This was our first indication. She did not want to be on the bottom. She's pointing where she wants to go on the volume shoulder. And then she rode her nine. 
She didn't fall back to the 50 and she was just sitting on her 9 or 20, the light SMAs that float up. So we looked at it right here and she took off and she ran for, what was it, 10 days and she hit a high here of 97. Now we had a drawback right here. She pulled back. This would have been a tough call. This may have been I want to sell, especially if you're looking at a five minute chart or a one hour chart. But looking here, at the four hour chart, you could see she never came below her nine day SMA. And as long as you stay on top of the nine, you're in position to climb. And everything here still looks like it's in position to climb. And we had a lot of push here at the very last day Friday. So that's what we got going right now. 42% is not bad. 19 out of 45 stocks is 42%. We've got some good gainers in here. A couple hundred percent are gains. Uh, bits W and these are both warrants right here. I think one is attached to a SPAC, one is not. We got 50% gains here on Plush. Plush is doing well. She is still above, uh, oh, why isn't that red? <laughs> that should be red. 16 comes under 21, so that, that one should be red. But here are the stocks that are running, have been running. I'm not saying they are still running, but this is what we've produced over the last 30 days, and I'm going to try to make it better. Looking at warm charts, I think is better than looking at hot news. And the more charts I look at, the better honed my skill gets at identifying them. All right, now I'm going to share with you my top five stocks out of this list right here. What do you think they are? Insta-change. Well, not really. <laughs> For you, it was instant. For me, it's been almost 24 hours. I started this video yesterday since I got the whole weekend to work on it, and I'm finishing it today, which explains why I look different. It's not magic. Sorry. Looking at the top five stocks that I have chosen out of the 45 that we've covered over the last 30 days. Now, what do I mean by the top five? Do I mean these are the best five stocks that we should be investing in? No, I'm not. I don't know what your criteria is. I don't know what your needs are. I'm looking at these stocks from my vantage point, so these are my top five picks out of the 45. I don't mind if you like them, but it's not a recommendation. I like to trade warrants. Do you like to trade warrants? I like getting into long holds and when they run and have a surge, sell some, but hold a large portion for that long run. Is that part of your game plan? So we may have different criteria. That's all my point is. The first stock I really like a lot is DCFC Tritium, DCFC Limited. This company is in a booming sector that I expect to grow over the next decade. They are into EV chargers. They make these pumps that look like gas pumps, but they put off electricity and they're good for 10 years, virtually maintenance free. Now what they are basically is like a white label. They produce them and they give them to other companies to distribute and they put those companies' names on the pumps, including BP. BP is leading the charge putting out electric chargers. They've got over 20,000 placements right now. They're shooting for 100,000. They're getting backing by lots of governments. They are in lots of countries. And that is one of DCFC's customers. And they just put in a second order and it was the biggest order in the history of the company. And they've got lots of other distributors that are distributing their pumps. So their business is booming. Their revenues are exploding. And I think Think this is going to be growing for 10 years. I expect some serious runs. I expect it to come back down when profit takers take it. And then I expect it to continue to grow. So I think it's great for a short hold. I think it's good for a long hold. I like DCFC. So much so that I'm on a warrant as well. Kind of cheating, right? No, I'm just following the money. And the chart on DCFCW is looking sweet. She looks like she's ready for a breakout. And people are now noticing it. Now, I think I noticed it before anybody else did. I really do. But I'm not trying to take credit here. I'm just saying that people are noticing this company because the revenues are exploding, business is exploding, everybody's getting on board, and we need the chargers. Every country needs them. So I'm expecting the warrant and the company's common stock to be great investments. Third company 
E-N-T-E-F. This is a uh, e-gaming esports company. They came on the market two years ago and their revenues are taking off. They were only doing a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of business in a quarter. Their last quarter, they did $16 million. Now, what do I mean when I say esports? I'm talking about e-gaming, playing video games, playing sim racing, which isn't a game, it's a simulator. It looks like a game, but it's based on all real factors, real math. So they're doing this over in Europe and a couple of other areas, but there's a lot of world still left to hit and it's growing at a phenomenal rate. They are filling sporting stadiums with people watching other people play games. And would you believe the prizes are a hundred thousand, a half a million dollars if you win playing these games? And what they do is they connect all the game developers and producers with the game players and they get paid for doing that. That's being a liaison. They also do all the advertising. You know there's money in advertising. They're making good money in the advertising. And they are sponsoring events at these stadiums. They are put, bringing all of this together, creating a lot of buzz. And right now it's blowing up in Europe and I'm sure it's gonna blow up in the USA and Canada when it gets over here. And their money is exploding big time. I think this is under the radar. The, the charts really look sad right now, but where this company is going, I'm sure it's going to be a billion dollar company. No doubt about it. They have got more partners. I mean, they're dealing with Indy race car. They're dealing with NASCAR, Toyota, Porsche, uh, Kia. I mean, they cannot just take a car and put it in their game. That is trademark. They have to make a deal with that company to get that car in their game. They have got so many gaming companies, Riot, EA Sports, so many with them. There's just no way this is going to crash. It just isn't. So I am very excited about ENTEF, even though she is under the radar, seriously. But as you can see here, she has got all her green ticks. She's got everything you need here to feel confident about this company, including being on the top tier. I love that about this company. The fourth stock, this is a SPAC warrant. This is BLNGW. Uh, this SPAC is merging with a plant-based food company with $50 million in revenues already. And it is rumored to be Impossible Foods, but we don't know that for fact. But that has probably got a lot of people on the hinge right now watching and waiting. I'm hoping that it is, absolutely am. They've already signed a letter of intent. They did that about a month and a half, two months ago. And in the last 30 days, they have had more than 10 new beneficiary owners come into the company. That means that they invested enough money, bought enough shares that they are now part owners. There are all these 13 G's, 13 A's, 13 D's. Every single one of those is when a new partner comes on board. And they've got over 10 of them that have just come on board over the last 30 days. I'm waiting for this deal to have a piece of news or to close and I'm expecting this warrant to go nuts. The common stock is 10 bucks. We're playing the penny stock here at just a little over 10 cents. She had some gains on Friday of about 30%. I think she's warming up, folks. You're not gonna wanna miss this one. And just so you all know, I do own this one already. Last stock, this is an interesting one, folks. I've picked this one for a very particular reason. This is Glick, ticker G-L-Y-C. Uh, currently, they just got news. They got the thumbs up to complete their phase three drug trial for acute myeloid leukemia. It is looking really good. Phase three, this is third base coming to home plate. This is when the money starts coming in. Lots of people are excited when they get through phase one, phase two, but finishing phase three is when you get on the market and start making revenues. That is the big deal. Not to mention it is a cancer drug. Then, they announced a public offering of 11 million shares. Now they've got something like 55 million shares outstanding. So to put another 11 million out there means they're diluting all the shareholders value by 20%. 11 divided into 51 comes out to one fifth. That's 20% dilution. Well, the stock fell 60% when they found out. 60% it fell with 20% dilution. 
That means there is 40% gains to be made on this. She fell from $4.16 down to $1.25. And then just a couple days later, a new price target came out for the stock of $8. Dollars currently at a dollar eighty-eight. She had a little bit of bump on Friday, but from her fall of a dollar twenty-five, she's already up to a dollar eighty-eight. She should go back up to three something just for that forty percent return because it was an overreaction. The stock fell way too far. Twenty percent dilution did not deserve a sixty percent fall, and I'm expecting it to come back. And now with an $8 price target, you've got somebody pulling the rope to actually pull it maybe even higher than $4. Now, honestly, I can't remember who it was that gave that price target. It matters. If EF Hutton says it, you can almost expect the stock to run to near $8. But if uh, Tom Diddley D gave it, probably isn't going to do anything. So I'm not real sure, but in either case, it was an overreaction. It dropped way too far on what is going on. So they put 11 million shares on the market. It's not that bad. They're in phase three with this leukemia drug and it's about ready to pass. Everything looks great. Why would you dump your stock at such a loss? So I think getting in now could be a very opportune time to make some strong gains just in recovery and maybe even reaching for that price target. All right, those are the five stocks I like. There are other stocks to consider, but I got to save some DD for you. All right, without changing my clothes or hairstyle, let's go take a look at what warm charts are. We're going to go through this not too long, but I want you to get an idea of what it is I do so that you can do it too. What we're going to take a look at now, you can do pretty much on any trading platform. However, if you do have Thinkorswim and you like what I'm doing and how I'm doing it, I've got it all set up a special way and I don't have time to show you how I did that right now. But I did make a video that shows you all the things that I'm going to be sharing with you now and how I set it up so that you can make your research easy and fluid too. So what I normally do, folks, is I come over here and I get myself a scan. That's the first thing I do, and you can use whatever scan you want. My favorite scan is to use a double zero one to three dollars. And I put it in percentage change, so I have my largest gainers at the top. Then I scroll down to about 10%. Right there, that's good, 9.43%. And I look at that chart. Now over here, I've got a quick chart set up, and I can see that. Now, of course, my big head isn't down here in this area, so I can see everything. But this is what I would do. I would set it up on a four hour chart and I would click each one of these twos. I've got a yellow two I put here, explained in that video I just showed you. And I just come down and I click each one and I glance at each chart. That's a warm chart. We had a big come up, come down, looks like she could bounce. This one looks like a warm chart. It's come over the 200 and it looks like it's ready to climb. This is how I would do it. And I just go downhill from my 10% and I just keep looking at charts. However, this, oh, there's another warm chart. AAGH, look at that. That's just about ready to break out. So what I've done is I've turned my scan into a watch list. I'm gonna close this quick chart I'm gonna open up my watch list and I am gonna go find, what did I call this one? Oh, this is a double zero, one to three dollars. All right, that is this list. This list has now been transferred over here. Now there's a couple benefits. When I'm over here, I have to use my mouse and that little purple arrow and get on top of each two. Gotta get on each one and click my mouse. Gotta do it that way. And I only got a little tiny chart over here. Of course, I could make that bigger, but I can do this too. Now, I can click on any one of these I want. Now, I was down here at nine. Let's see, where was that BMC? No, it was somewhere around here. Oh, we, we were up at 9%. Right there, right there. Hold on, I'm looking for that hot chart. Right, we, we saw that one. There was the bounce and AHHH right there. So now, here's the advantages. I have got my list over here and I do not need to use my mouse. You can't see my mouse, can you? I don't have to use this. Now, if you're on your phone, you never use a mouse, but I don't have to use this now. I can actually use my keyboard and I can just use my arrows and go down. Now, this is what you want because I'm glancing 
at these charts right now. I'm looking for ones that have heat. Now we had seen a couple right there. So I find a stock that has heat. What makes this have heat? Well, obviously you can see she's been flat on this 50 day SMA, bounced off of a low, that can always be an exciting event. See if things change after the low bubble. Hit a low bubble, came back up to the 50, and voila, we got change. She is now pushing off of her 50, climbing right to the 200. She gets above that 200, she's ready to rip. Look at our technicals. We've got this PPO screaming up and our ADX going down. This is trend continuation. It tells me as long as this direction of the line doesn't change, the direction of my trend doesn't change. Doesn't matter if it's going up or down. And when you see this spreading apart, that blue line going up, the red line of the ADX going down, 100% guaranteed your price is climbing. So as long as you see the V being built more and more and more, the price will continue to climb. All of our technicals are strong here. So that is what I do. And I just go down, down, down. Now there was another one right before that. Can you see the heat? right? She was underneath the 200. She tapped it once, but she's not going to go through it when your SMA is coming downhill. If she got up on top, she'd be pushed down, right? She'd be wanting to slide down that hill. She came down to a low button, a low button, a low bubble. We're looking for a change. Does something change after that low bubble? Heck yeah. Look at this. It went rip and tip. Jumped through that 50 day, which it was having a hard time getting through before just tore it up, ripped right through her 200 and is now bouncing across there and doesn't it look like it's ready to take off right now? This looks like a hot chart. You got lots of volume in the picture. Technicals are strong. Everything is pushing up. Don't worry if this isn't going downhill. That's just one of the patterns. As long as this is going up, you're a winner. You're a winner. And this looks like a winning stock. So we've got a hot chart. What I do now is I take that ticker BCHG and I go look it up. I go over to the OTC markets. They've got all the news. They've got all the filings. Most of it anyways, saves me a lot of time. And I check out their filings. I check out their news presses. Not today's, not yesterday's. I mean, I'll look at them. But what I'm looking for is something a little older, a month or two months ago that says we're closing this deal at the end of February or we're looking to make an acquisition at the end of February. Well, here it is in the uh, uh, third week of February. Perfect timing. Nobody's paying attention to it or maybe it is. We see it's getting warm. It's getting hot. Now might be a time to get in before it takes off. Now, this is the sad part. Just because you find a hot chart doesn't mean you're going to find any lingering news. There's many charts I find that look good. I go over, there is no news presses. There are no filings. I start digging deeper. I really want a match to light this bad boy because it looks hot. And if you can't find anything, I pass on it. Now you could put it on your watch list. The chart is set up and if something did come out tomorrow, hoo -hoo, this bad boy would take off. So you could put that in your watch list. It doesn't cost you anything to do that. However, when I'm doing a search to talk to you about stocks, I don't have time to build every single stock I see. So I look for those stocks that have a warm chart and have lingering news. Now I've got a few examples here I want to share with you. Where did I put those? Oh, I put those at 111 show. Too many watch lists. All right. These are ones I just grabbed up. I was just going through and I just snagged them up. You see here that our 200 day SMA is falling hard and she's still falling, but she's at that point to where she's just about ready to start getting flat and maybe start curving up, but we need it to go flat. That is when she is most vulnerable for a breakout. When things get level, then the price can get on top without tipping one way or the other and get its footing and take off. We've seen it tried to get through hard real hard while the SMA was falling. She fell down here and she has broke it a second time. The SMA is there. It's tapping on it. Our, our technicals are strong. We've got everything looking like it's ready to start climbing. So it is a warm chart. I'm not saying this one's hot, hot, but it's a warm chart. Volume is a little weak, but it's not going to hurt me to go check it out. See if there's a catalyst, see if there's a filing, something that's going to happen sometime soon here. That would be one of them I would look at. 
This is a C-U-R-I-W. It's a warrant. Uh, we are looking at four-hour charts here. This one is set up, isn't it? 200 was way too far away from the price to be able to do anything. Hit a low bubble here. She's been climbing ever since. 200's getting closer. Price is climbing. They're closing in on each other. It's looking like an imminent collision. All of our technicals are looking pretty good and strong. So right now, this looks like we should be keeping our eye on it. The only problem, again, we have no volume here. I love to see volume. Volume gives you a big insight to how many people are looking at it. This could have just been one person pushing it. We don't know. But again, just a few minutes going to, with this ticker, checking out to see what sort of lingering news there is. You might find something hot. Here's another warrant. This is uh, CLRCW. This is Climate Rock. That's the four hour chart. She doesn't get a lot of trading. What sort of jumps are we getting here? From 6.4 up to 10. Woo, that's an 80% jump right there. She's going up and down, up and down. She's really not getting anywhere. She hit a low bubble here and things have changed. She was downhill falling here. Now she's leveled off and actually starting to climb. That's a whole different trend change here. She's gotten over her nine, over her 20, and it looks like she's over her 50. She was underneath all of them. This shows a lot of strength. This is a trend change right now, and it could be a breakout. Speaking of breakouts, we got a crossover on our PPO, just had one on our MACD, and we've got our spread. See our spread there on our blue PPO and our ADX. So this would be one I would go take a look at. Oh, look here. Ha ha. We had it on our list. AAGH. This one looks really good, folks. You need to go check this one out. AAGH, folks. Go look at the filings. Uh, go to the otcmarkets.com website. You see me do this every day. Go over to filings. Uh, disclosures is what they call it. See if you see anything in the last 30, 60 days. Check out the news presses, especially 30, 60 days ago. Go through it. See if you see any dates or something you're talking about that's going to happen just in a little bit. They love to give news presses about things that are going to happen. That looks juicy to me. Oh, another warrant. Okay, this is Beachbody Company, B-O-D-Y-W-S. You can see it, right? Now, I am particular to these sort of breakouts, the ones underneath the big SMAs. These are the ones that once they get on, on top, they break free like a dog getting out of its pen or off its leash. They just run like crazy. Down here, you might get some gains. Up here, we could catch one that looks like it's running, running, running. Well, if it's up here in blue space, it's never been here before. That takes a little different type of skill. And I won't lie to you. I'm still working on that skill. But for recognizing breakouts down here, for how they move across the SMAs and approach the major SMAs, I'm pretty good and I'm getting better. Looking at the volume, reading my technicals. So that's what I'm sharing with you. If you can learn how to read the ones that are up here in the blue air, by all means, whoever's teaching that, turn me on to them. I'd like to learn that as well. We got a regular OTC stock here, CNVCF. Oh, you can see why we're looking at this one. She was going downhill, had a big spike here. Oh my God. She jumped from uh, 20 cents to 32 cents. So that's uh, it's a 30% jump. Looks bigger than that, doesn't it? She came down and she had a humongous fall here. And now she's in recovery. She could easily come back to where she fell from, 21, 22 cents. And right now she's at 19 cents. And I'm sure that's what everyone expects. You got a lot of volume here. Our technicals have turned, right? Our red and our blue are separating. We've had a crossover on our MACD. Our RSI is starting to climb. That's what we are considering. This must be a recovery. Now, maybe they had dilution. It was overkill. I love to see these. People come out with financials and they miss their projected revenues by 1%. 1% and the bloody stock falls 40%. Overkill. Get in there. People sold on something stupid. You can buy it cheap and then ride it back up to where it belongs. All right. So it maybe, uh, you know, deserved a little drop, but not that much. So this would be one. I'd go find out why it fell on this day and see if it's serious enough to condone this sort of drop. And is it probably going to come back up?
The last one I got here for us is AIM. A-I-M. This is AIM Immunotech. God, I shouldn't have even tried. Oh, look at these bounces. So we've got lots of bounces in here. And bounces can make you money. If you find a stock that's doing this all the time, just hang with it. Hang with it for a month and see if you can start to read it. Are they every single morning? Is that when they're bouncing? Uh, let's see if they actually show here. <clears throat> that one was in the morning. That one was in the afternoon. No, she's all over the place. Wow, look at that bounce. She went from 36 cents up to 65 cents. That's almost 100% at that price level. Let's back this out and get that full picture. So why does this one look hot to me? It's already broke out. We would have probably liked to have looked at it right here, right? So she would have broke out from this uh, 45 cents, hit a high of 89 cents. There's a 100% run right there. She's come back down and I want to grab my Fibonacci. When I see a strong surge, if you poke the bottom of where the surge started and go to the top of where the surge ended, oh, I got the wrong tool. My bad, folks. Let me get this right for us. There we go. All right. You poke the bottom of the surge and go to the top of the surge right there. What I'm looking for is 50%. I want to see the price stay over 50% and we're under it. All I see is that she's sitting on that 200 day SMA and wanting to work her way back up. Let me get this out of the way. Kind of tough to see through it. So I'm going to zoom in on that. So what I see is a long jumper. You know, in the Olympics, you see that person run, 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 and then they take one jump, two jump, and then boing, the third jump is the big one. That's what I'm seeing here. We had the big jump up to the two, 200 SMA, one jump, two jump. She's coming back up underneath. I know she's underneath right now, but that's what happens a lot of times when she's arguing with this and then all of a sudden she would just lurch. So it's not a perfect setup, but when you see multiple bounces on top of the 200 after getting up on top of it, she worked hard and furious to get up there. Doesn't look like she wants to come down. So now she's going to get her footing around here and then she could take off. So I am looking for stocks that have a lot of volume. Matter of fact, let's come back over to this. You can at least see my quick charts. I'll make this a little bit bigger. And so I'm just going through here like this. That's my four hour. This looks like it's ready for a breakout. It got over the 50, but it was too steep, way too steep, slipped and fell down the hill. The 50 is getting more and more level, and this is banging its head like it is just wanting to get out. And look at our technicals, looking good. And once you find a stock, and you know, it doesn't matter if you catch every single one of them. Find the ones that you recognize, the ones you recognize. The more often you do this, the more you'll start to recognize stocks that look like they're ready to break out. And when you see one, just go check out the news, check out the filings, and then build yourself a list. And if you see volume come in the next day on your list, when you see volume come in, jump, jump over there. You may want to get all of it. If it's going to be a run, you may want to grab your whole entire position. But if you think it's going to run for a while, it's a slow growth, it's not surging, get some of it right now and pick up some later. Maybe it dips and you get a better price. You never know. So that's how I do my hunting, folks. I go through my scan one chart at a time, just glancing at them. And don't worry about it. Don't try to force one to fit. This one, you know, it's getting close. It's had some heavy bounces off the 50 coming up to the 200. If it jumps out to you as a hot chart, go do some analysis. Do some research. You don't have to be great at this. Just find the ones you can find. And if those make you money, just keep doing that. You don't have to be good at everything. Just good at one thing. Find that one thing you're good at. Find that one chart you can recognize. And when you do it over and over and over again successfully, cha-ching, you're in the money. I hope this has helped, folks. I'm just trying to help you find stocks on your own. I'm only one man. I looked at 45 stocks in 30 days out of how many? Tens of thousands of stocks. So I am limiting you. Two of us together can do more. Three, four, five of us, if we start sharing our due diligence, oh, wouldn't that be sweet?
I've enjoyed this, folks. I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya. Thank you.